Okay guys, I want to talk about tool offsets and work offsets for a CNC lathe. And uh, it's, a, it's a little bit confusing, but if you can understand how to do tool and work offsets for a mill, you can understand how to do tool and work offsets for a lathe. It's really not that much different, it's just a, a little bit more confusing, I think. So, this is our kind of schematic right here. There's the chuck. There's your workpiece. This is the center line of the spindle. This is your turret up here. There's a tool, stick tool in one station, and we got a, a twist drill in the other station. And right now the turret is parked at the home position, so we've homed out the machine. So right now, uh, if we went to the machine and looked at the coordinates for the machine, should say x 0, 0.0 and z 0, 0.0. A tool offset or a work offset, they basically do the same thing, is the difference between where the machine says that zero is and where you wrote your program zero to be. So when we program this part, we used this point right here as the zero point. But the machine thinks that zero is over here at its home position. So in order to reconcile this difference, we need an offset. And we can do that by using the machine itself to take some measurements. So basically, the way that you have to think about it is this distance right here is the work offset Z value. So that's the Z value that will go into your G54 or your G50 work shift depending on what your machine uses or if it's an Okuma that's your VZ of Z and then if you have multiple tools you have a second value which is a tool offset and that is this distance right here so the tool offset really is a difference between the tools whereas a work offset is a difference between the machine and the program so that's the best way to think about it. Now, what your people get really confused is that these offsets are additive. So when you call the G54, it sets the machine with a Z offset and an X offset. But then when you call the tool, it has its own offsets and the values are added or subtracted depending on their value automatically by the machine. So, like I said, it's not strictly necessary to have both but it's much more convenient so uh, the best way that I have found to set up the machine is to use what I, what I call a master tool system so in the master tool system what you do is you pick a tool doesn't matter what it is just pick something. It could even be the face of the turret if you don't want to use a tool. You know, maybe you swap out all your tools after every job. You know, I don't know. Pick some reference value that you can use on the turret as a master. And then make sure you use the same one every time. You have to be, you have to be consistent, otherwise you're going to get yourself in trouble. Uh, so what I do is I use uh, the first tool on my turret which is a 80 degree turning, OD turning insert uh, tool and I never take that tool out of the turret. It's my primary roughing tool and I use that as my master tool. So what I do when I want to set a tool or a work offset is I just bring this tool down and touch off to the end of my part or the end of the face of the chuck. Some reference surface doesn't matter what it is. And then whatever 
machine coordinate we have in Z, that's the value that I enter into my G54. There's no X work offsets. All the X values are going to be done with your tool offsets. Um, and the reason is that the X position of the part never changes because the spindle center line is fixed. That's different than a mill. On a mill, your part offset can move in three dimensions. Bring your tool down, touch off, whatever the value of the machine coordinates is in Z, that's your G54 value. Now, while you're touching the end of that part, you can go ahead and hit origin on your machine, and it should zero out uh, one of the position readouts. It might say relative, or it might say external, EXT, or it might say uh, universal. It just depends on what machine you have. Um, and then just zero out the Z. And once you do that, you can just back the turret up, rotate around to this next tool, touch it to the same spot, and then whatever value you have for the Z, let's say it's 2.0, uh, that's the value that you'll enter into your tool offset over here. So let's say it's 2.0. So all we've done basically is we've used our CNC lathe as like a fancy height gauge. Um, and that's all it is, you're just measuring relative. Uh, but the reason that I like to use this, this uh, master tool method is that you don't have to use the offsets, the tool offsets, when you're setting the work offsets. Because the Z value for the tool offset is always zero. Otherwise, like let's say Let's say we had a 10 in here instead of a 0 for the, the uh, Z offset for tool 1. Uh, but now we want to use, use tool 1 in order to set the work offset. So we just jog the machine from the home position down here and uh, look at the, the machine position and then we say, okay, you know, whatever it is blah blah number. We'll put that in for the the Z, the G54. We'll go ahead and populate that with whatever this blah blah number is. Well that's not going to be right because it didn't subtract or add the 10 for the tool offset. So in order to actually use that method you'd have to go to MDI and say tool 0101 X, zero, Z, whatever, maybe 10, somewhere out here. Let the tool run down here, and then you could manually jog it over without hitting reset, and you would get the, the correct value. It would be added together. Uh, but by using the master tool method and having that set to zero, you don't have to worry about that. So anyway, it's kind of hard to explain in the, at the chalkboard. So let's go out to the machine and, and see if we can figure it out. So uh, what I'm going to use for this uh, job, this is a, a tool touch center. It's a cheapo tool made by Shars. Uh, it's aluminum, it's got magnets in the feet. You can buy these for, I don't know, 75 bucks, something like that. And they're pretty handy. Uh, it's basically just a dial indicator. Uh, but I use this to, uh, to touch off my tools. And so I'm just going to stick it right here. Yeah, I'm going to stick it on the jaws. Uh, normally I would stick it on the face of the chuck, but... Yeah, I want you guys to be able to see it. And what you're looking at is the position screen. So this machine shows four positions simultaneously. It has absolute machine increment and external. And the machine coordinates are just what you would expect. That's the master coordinates for the machine. Absolute is the coordinates that are uh, basically showing the tool position using the offsets. External is basically kind of like a G92. It's a one-time use offset that you can use locally for you know onesie twosie kind of work. 
and then increment is basically your distance to go. Okay, I don't know if you can see that, but I've touched the tool and brought the indicator needle to zero. All right, so now that I got the tool touched off, the first tool touched off, what I need to do is basically uh, zero out this external position. The external position is like a one-time use position that I can use for just for tasks like this. So I'll just go page up to external and then hit Z, origin, and it zeroes out the uh, external position for Z. Okay, so now I can set the next tool. Okay, so this value right here, 3.2921, that's the value, uh, the Z value that represents the difference between the master tool and this second tool that I'm touching off. So this tool, this number right here is the number that I can enter into the tool offset. So we go here and then page down and these are the tool offsets. So I would just have to, to key in Z, whatever, 3.28, blah, 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 into that Z value, and away you go. And that's all there is to it. Repeat for as many tools as you have. Now, most machines, uh, especially FANUC machines, are going to have a routine for this. Uh, and if you can follow the routine, then you don't have to actually type the numbers. You can just use uh, the measure key or, or whatever, and uh, it's a lot less tedious. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to set the X offset for the tools, or the diameter offset. And uh, basically all that you need is some piece of material that you have uh, a known diameter for. And you can just measure the diameter uh, accurately with the calipers or a micrometer. And then it needs to have as close to zero run out as possible. Um, and I just toss this piece in there. It's got a little bit of run out, but it'll be close enough for the demonstration that we're doing. Now uh, you can actually set up and take a cut and measure the diameter of the cut. That's one way to do it. Uh, the other way to do it really is just to touch off onto the diameter. So I got the machine in the hand wheel mode and I've just got a strip of paper. Alright, so I'm getting a little drag now. Alright, so here's the tool offset uh, page in the machine. And you can see right here, this is, the, this is the position display or digital readout display for the machine coordinates. And if you look at the X value right now, it is 7.1503. So, what we need to do is add the diameter of the workpiece. And, uh, Remember, all the X measurements on a lathe are going to be in diameter, not radius. So uh, I know that it's a half inch diameter workpiece. So that makes this 7.6503. And actually, if you look up here, that's tool two. And you can see the value that I have already entered in there is 7.6455. So it's already within uh, five thousandths. Okay, so I'm gonna to touch off a boring bar next, and it's exactly the same process, except that uh, this time, I brought the boring bar down on the bottom side of the workpiece, and uh, obviously if your machine doesn't have enough travel, uh, you may not be able to do that, uh, but in this case, it's a small diameter part, and the machine has plenty of travel to reach. Okay, so for the uh, ID boring bar, the process is the same except backwards. So this is our machine position for that tool, 9.6239, except this time we have to subtract the diameter. So we're going to end up at 9.1239. And if you look up here, that's tool 3, uh, which is uh, offset 53 in this machine. And you can see I'm at 9.1096. 
So we have a, a discrepancy of what, 14 thousandths, something like that. Um, and the reason that, that's, that there's that discrepancy is that I have a wear offset uh, already set of 13 thousandths. So as you can see, this is sort of an accurate process. It's just that uh, I had already compensated for that discrepancy elsewhere in the control. All right, so the last scenario on the X offset is a center line tool like a drill or a reamer. And uh, this type of tool requires you to sweep an indicator around the tool. And uh, I'm not gonna do a live demonstration, uh, but if you look at my video about how to align the spindle of a lathe, it's the same process. Uh, but I'll show you the tools that I use. So what I like to use is uh, something like this. This is a Morse taper sleeve, and it has an inch and a quarter outside diameter. It's nicely ground. It's perfectly round and straight. And I'll just insert this into the boring bar pocket, uh, leaving it stick out, you know, as far as I can. And then uh, run that up as close as I can to the center line. And then what I like to use to sweep it in is something like this. This is a one inch travel, one thou indicator, and it's mounted directly to this Mighty Mag base. And I just like to stick it onto the chuck like so and uh, sweep that sweep that tool in directly you can spin this around and you're not going to get any deflection uh, that's the best way that I know of the, the second best way is to use a coaxial indicator um, but you need a special set of jaws to hold on to that what you don't want to use is something like this you know the standard Noga arm and the reason you don't want to use this is that this arm will sag so when you're on the bottom side of the tool, gravity pulls the tool, the, the indicator down. And then when you swing over to the top side of the tool, gravity's still pulling it the same direction. And just the weight of that indicator will cause you to be off um, by you know, whatever the amount of sag that you have in your setup is. It can be a lot, usually it's around 10 thousandths. All right, so now it's basically the same process in order to set the, the work offset. Uh, so like I said, there's no X value for the, the work offset, you just to use the Z values. Okay, so you can see my stick tool is touching the end of the part right there. Okay, now this is the position display, and you can see this coordinate right here, minus 13.5546 in the machine coordinates. That's the difference between the home position of tool 1, the master tool, and the zero that I programmed the part from. So this number right here is the number that's gonna get entered into your Z value for your G54. Um, and that's really it. All right, so now that we've learned how to do it the hard way, let me show you how to do it the easy way. This machine, this is a, about a 95 or 96, 1996 era Morisiki SL20. It's got a Yaznak LX3 control, and this machine has a touch setter probe for setting off the tools. And that's it right there. I just swung it down. It's got four uh, touch setting pads on it, you know, one for each uh, cardinal direction. And, uh, you have to have the machine at the home position. You turn on the tool setting function and then it automatically switches the machine to the tool shift screen and it automatically switches the cursor to the active tool. In this case it's actually tool 2. And then it's just a matter of jogging it down until it touches off. That's it. It automatically put the numbers in for me. And uh, yeah, it makes it really easy. All right, so now that we kind of done a generic uh, version of how to set the tool out and, where, and work offsets, uh, I'll explain to you how this particular machine is set up. So this machine is a lot different than uh, than the, the normal FANUC control that you might be used to, or uh, especially like something simple like a Haas. This machine is pretty complicated. 
Uh, it actually has, yeah, it has two different tool offsets and a work shift. So their tool offsets one through 50 are designated as tool wear offsets. And so this is where I compensate the tool for wear or make adjustments to get the diameters and uh, faces to, to where I want them. And then this is also where I put the radius for tool nose compensation. Um, and then if you page down to tool offsets 51 through 100, these are the actual tool shifts. And these are the numbers that are automatically populated by the touch probe. And uh, I don't have control over these numbers, but what I have done is I set the parameters in the control for the touch setter, and I set them up in such a way that my master tool will be at Z0 when it touches the face of the chuck. And so I'll page down here. And the reason that I do that is because this is the work shift. So it's actually considered a tool offset, it's tool zero. So tool zero on this machine is actually the work shift. Um, and the reason that I have the parameter set up so that Z zero is at the face of the chuck is that it's very convenient for me when I'm setting up a work piece. I can actually just take a tape measure or a ruler or something and I can just measure from the face of the chuck out to the end of my work piece. And then, you know, based on whatever that measurement is, like uh, normally I just use this, I use this small square, you know, most of my work is chucker work. Obviously I had a long piece in there, 20 inches, that was those hoist drums that I made the video about. Uh, anyway, I got my work piece in the chuck, I can just measure with this scale, and then whatever value I have here, I can just enter it directly for the Z. So I don't ever have to, have to touch off anything. I can do direct measurement for the, the work offset, and I can do probe measurement for the tools. So it's actually very convenient. And uh, if you have a Okuma control or one of the newer uh, Fanuc or Mitsubishi controls, you also have turret offsets. And so that's a fourth offset. And uh, yeah, it can get very confusing because all those offsets add and subtract from each other. All right guys, that's gonna be it. Uh, I'm sure it's still just clear as mud but once you get out there and try it, you'll see what I'm talking about and it'll make sense. Uh, and like I said, almost all machines and controls are gonna have some kind of a routine as far as setting these offsets. And once you figure out the routine, it's a lot easier. Uh, you may not have to type in any numbers at all. But if you're lost and you don't know how to follow the routines, you can always jot down the numbers from the position screen and enter those numbers directly into the offset tables and it'll get you where you need to go. And you know, with a standard two axis lathe, you're probably talking less than 12 tools and you really only need to worry about the X offsets for your work. So it really does not take that long to set up all your tools and set your work offsets. Um, but like I said, a lot of machines have, uh, have routines to make it easier for you.